Nothing in this podcast or on our website should be construed as medical advice. Consult your healthcare provider for your individual nutritional and medical needs. The information presented is based on our research and is strictly that of the author and not necessarily those of any professional group or other individual. Hi, I'm Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. Welcome to Sue's Healthy Minutes. I'm so excited you've joined me today, and I hope this episode encourages you and allows you to find the answers you have been praying for, for the health of you and your family. Today on Sue's Healthy Minutes, since my husband and I are still in Greece, I will be sharing the replays of episode 29, My Favorite Fats for Baking. With the Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays approaching, it's helpful to know which fats might be a better choice to use in our traditional family favorites. Healthier options than the ones called for in a recipe or the ones maybe our mothers or grandmothers may have used. So as you listen today, Remember, our holiday baking can be not only delicious, but also nutritious when we choose healthy fats and freshly milled whole grains. Enjoy. Some bread bakers stress that real bread should contain only four ingredients, water, flour, salt, and a small amount of yeast or sourdough starter. And of course, delicious bread can be made this way, but most Americans like a little softer, fluffier bread. And in most bread baking, fats provide tenderness, moisture, color, as well as flavor to the bread. The type of fat used in a recipe and the method for incorporating it into the other ingredients will influence both the texture and the flavor of the finished product. In the last episode, I shared that extra virgin olive oil is my oil of choice for most of my bread baking, such as yeast breads and most quick breads. But today, I want to talk about my favorite solid fats that I use in baking pastries, such as cakes, cookies, brownies, biscuits, and pie dough. I shared in the fact about fats that fats that are solid at room temperature, like butter and coconut oil, are called saturated fats. During the 1930s and 40s, experts agreed that fats were actually good for you. But in the 1950s, saturated fats such as butter in particular began to get a bad rap and governmental agencies and even medical professionals began to proclaim that these fats were not good for you. And by 1960, Vegetable oil products such as margarine and shortening were touted as healthy alternatives, but nothing could be farther from the truth. Though margarine and shortening may be preferred by some bakers, they are most often made by hydrogenating an unsaturated vegetable oil. And as stated in my previous episode, the fact about fats, these unnatural, heavily processed hydrogenated products cannot do the critical job that God created fats to perform in our bodies, and therefore they are not healthy food choices at all. And in fact, these fats are ones that I am quite careful to avoid. So for most of my baking that uses a solid fat, I choose butter, real, organic, unsalted butter. I am very particular about choosing organic dairy, especially butter, sour cream, and heavy cream. Since metabolic toxins from digestion tend to be stored in the fat of any animal, I am choosier to go organic when it comes to animal fats. I use unsalted butter as well. When I first began researching the refining of salt and the actual amazing health benefits of real unrefined salt, I decided that I would use unsalted butter for my baking and cooking so that I could ensure that the salt I was getting was unrefined with all the trace minerals still intact. Also, since various brands of butter have varying degrees of saltiness, I will get more consistent results using an unsalted butter where I can control the amount of saltiness I want to achieve. Butter 
moistens and tenderizes baked goods and literally saturates them with flavor. Because butter contains moisture, it contributes actually to the leavening by creating steam during the baking process. It is also unsurpassed for reinforcing the flakiness that is so desirable in biscuits and pie dough. Different fats melt at different temperatures. Those such as butter that melt at a lower temperature will tenderize baked goods more than those that melt at higher temperatures, such as your vegetable shortenings and margarines. So do not be deterred by your grandmother's or your mother's recipes that may call for shortening or margarine. Replacing them with the same amount of real butter will give as good or perhaps even better results and certainly healthier. While I personally choose to use extra virgin olive oil in my yeast breads, replacing that olive oil with butter in yeast bread dough will actually give a softer, more velvety crumb. But now you may be asking, aren't saturated fats like butter bad for me? The truth is, butter can actually be good for you. Nutritionally, along with oils, butter is classified in the family of fat. Though butter is about 82% fat, it brings along with this fat considerable quantities of vitamin A, a fat-soluble vitamin, which of course plays a part in our vision and skin health, along with mucous membrane protection, giving us resistance to infections. Vitamin D is another fat-soluble vitamin found in butter, and it, of course, has an essential role in calcium metabolism and bone growth. Dairy fats, such as butter, have been shown to contain as many as 400 different fatty acids. While most of these fatty acids are either saturated or monosaturated, and a very low percentage is polyunsaturated, One such short-chain saturated fatty acid, butyric acid, from which butter actually gets its name, is actually quite easily digested and utilized for energy. Butyric acid is the primary energy source for our intestinal tract cells. Of particular importance is a group of short-chain fatty acids that make up about 10% of the fat content of butter. These fatty acids known as conjugated linoleic acid, or CLA for short, occur naturally in any food product from ruminant animals such as cows, hence their presence in butter. Extensive human studies show that these short-chain fatty acids actually help to prevent the buildup of fats, cholesterol, and other substances on our arterial walls. CLAs also exhibit powerful anti-carcinogenic as well as anti-obesity properties. Though butter is high in calories, about 100 calories per tablespoon, these CLAs are responsible for making us feel full and satisfied. So eaten in moderation, butter can actually help one maintain proper weight. And these fats stored in our tissues represent our body's main source of energy during times of limited food sources, such as periods of fasting or even starvation, or simply in times of prolonged physical exertion. According to Dr. Mary Ennig, who pioneered research from the Lipid Research Group of the University of Maryland on saturated fats, found that saturated fats such as butter and coconut oil have short-chain fatty acids and are therefore efficiently utilized by the body for energy. She promoted these fats as helpful unless drastically overconsumed. So while we may not want to regularly use and consume sticks and sticks of butter in our baking, moderation is key and certainly A little real butter spread on a slice of real bread is truly satisfying. As previously mentioned, Dr. Mary Ennig also pioneered research on coconut oil, which at the time was vilified by health experts as a very 
unhealthy saturated fat. But my thoughts kind of are, tell that to anyone living in a tropical climate. But again, thanks to Dr. Ennig's research, it's now widely known that coconut oil may actually promote optimum health. Coconut oil is rich in lauric acid, a health-promoting fatty acid with antimicrobial properties that has been a proven help for those suffering from compromised immune systems. Coconut oil is equally as good externally for moisturizing the skin and hair. So for times when I need a dairy-free option, or actually just because I like it, I choose coconut oil for a butter or fat replacement in cookies, cakes, and brownies. You can simply substitute it one for one in any recipe calling for a solid fat such as butter or even margarine or shortening. I love the mild flavor coconut oil lends to baked cookies and brownies. Coconut oil melts at about 78 degrees, so may also be substituted for a liquid oil in recipes as well. It is also excellent for stir frying and popping popcorn for a wonderful light flavor. Now, like all other fats and oils, not all coconut oil is processed the same. At Breadbeckers, we've chosen an extra virgin raw centrifuged extracted coconut oil. Centrifuged coconut oil is made from fresh coconuts that are shelled, chopped, and then gently expeller pressed. The temperatures of the coconut flesh and the resulting coconut milk emulsion are carefully monitored to ensure they do not exceed 78 degrees or room temperature. The resulting coconut milk emulsion is then chilled slightly so that the oil will pull out of solution and separate. Next, the cooled milk, by use of a large centrifuge, is separated into a pure oil and a skim coconut milk. The centrifuge works much like a cream separator used for separating cream from cow's milk. It requires quite a few passes through this chilled centrifuge to obtain pure oil, but the result is absolutely fabulous. Centrifuged virgin coconut oil is creamy and smooth when it's in its semi-solid state. It's completely clear, almost like spring water, when it's in its liquid state, and it's pure white when it's in its solid state. It has a very mild, light coconut taste. This oil consistently rates number one every time it is taste tested. Now, you can find this coconut oil on our website at breadbeckers.com. We have two sizes, one gallon pails and one quart jars. I hope you've enjoyed the series on the fact about fats. In concluding this series, I'd like to recap a little by reading a quote from the late Dr. Rex Russell's book entitled, What the Bible Says About Healthy Living. It is a classic and one of the most practical and simple books on healthy living and eating that I have ever read. You can find this book on our website, breadbeckers.com. It is certainly worth the read. So in the words of Dr. Russell, here's my recap. Remember, our cells use both carbohydrates and fats for fuel. Both are like chains or trains of atoms having molecules attached to their sides. So fats and carbohydrates are structurally similar, although chemically different from each other. At the end of these trains is a caboose called a fatty acid. These substances are also used for fuel as well as for transporting proteins, which are many times more complex than the carbohydrate or fat themselves. Enzymes, which are necessary in helping the body utilize food, are one kind of protein. To continue the analogy of a train, connectors called bonds link the cars of this complex train together. Fatty acids that have two or more of these links or double bonds are called polyunsaturated, poly meaning many, and those having no double bonds are called saturated fatty acids. God has built short chain or double bond fatty acids into fats such as olive oil, butter, coconut oil, 
and even whole grains. By design, these foods are better for our consumption because God designed us to. End quote. Dr. Rex Russell loved the Lord and encouraged people not to alter God's perfect design. Isaiah 55, verse 2, one of my favorite bread scriptures, asks us a very critical question that is worth considering. Here is Isaiah 55, verse 2, and I quote, Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your earnings for that which does not satisfy? Hearken diligently to me and let your soul delight itself in fatness. This week, I hope that you will delight in some good fatness on your real bread. Until next time, this is Sue Becker from Bread Beckers with Sue's Healthy Minutes. Sue's Healthy Minutes podcast has been a presentation by the Bread Beckers Incorporated located in Woodstock, Georgia. For more information, store hours, and learning opportunities, visit breadbeckers.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. Share this with two friends who would benefit from this information and be sure to join us again next week for more of Sue's Healthy Minutes.